I just used to come away from dropping my daughter off or something like this or dropping my son off and um, pull into a gateway and, and bore my bloody eyes out. And um, difficult. It really is. I've had lots of days just sitting at the kitchen table with a can of beer crying for hours and left. The family justice system in this country is a farcical reactionary joke. It causes such pain that if it affected anyone else save children or more specifically their fathers, it would be a primary concern to the nanny impulses of this politically correct government. Fucking foxes get more consideration than fathers from this lot. Children must be returned to their families. Fathers must reclaim their children. This law stops them. Get rid of it. I propose we write new law to protect the rights of children to be with their dads equally where that is possible. A starting presumption stating that which is self-evident to everyone but the hacks in the family court system, that both parents are of equal value and in the eyes of the child usually equally loved. My suggestion is, and I think we've already gone through this, is that the law should state that where possible they are and the end result is they will be with each parent 50% of the time unless they otherwise choose themselves. I don't have a problem with that. So, so you and I would draft a law which said unless the circumstances uh, indicate otherwise the uh, starting point is equal division of time. I think it's fairer. I think it would be much more sensible. I think it would take a lot of the heat out of the situation. I think it would put people on a much more even footing. And it, also then they would think very carefully about what they're doing when they do split. Because at the moment it's too easy. And, it, and, it, and, the, and the trauma that's caused by the current system is just appalling. I think that would take, I think it would help enormously. This summer, the government published its proposals in the form of a green paper, a consultation document that may eventually become law. There are plans to encourage mediation, speed up the court process and provide contact centres. And though this may have some marginal benefit, the reality of this paper is that bureaucrats have listened to other bureaucrats' complaints of an overwhelmed system. As ever, people have been ignored. They refuse point blank to even consider allowing fathers to be with their children for 50% of the time, wherever that's possible. We're absolutely clear that the current system is not working anywhere like adequately enough. Um, we are not saying things are fine. This is why we're setting out what we think is a, a radical um, process of change. But it doesn't do that one thing it doesn't say, and it needs to be said, upon separation the children will be with both parents equally 50% of the time where possible. Nothing wrong with that at all. What we don't want to do though is to say that that's what everybody should be doing. Why the hell should the state be saying every child should be spending 50% of its time with one parent and 50% of another? I don't actually of another. expect that to happen. Uh, I expect okay. it to happen You're extremely rarely. It's neutralising the negotiating position. It is, yes. and it's okay. the backstop. You see, your prob my problem with this is that you're putting people in the states more for the rest of their life. You're putting them in the system like criminals. And everything we've talked about are systems of the state, you know, there's, there's this, then you have to report to judges who can then call you in and have you referred, and then there's welfare officers and mediators examining you to find you're wired, that sort of person. It's very Orwellian. And the endless interference, because you've just broken up with your missus. Fuck off. Get out of my life. You know, that's it. And save yourself a few quid in the bargain of the state. You know, I, I generally, what's the problem? What we believe the law says currently, and what we'll be saying again and again, is that we want um, the way in which parents behave and the way in which the law is worked out in practice um, to reflect cooperative parenting. 
or what the research tells us, it's not contact per se which makes for uh, the best outcomes for the children. It's the quality of the contact. So it's not just, you know, divvying the child up. The idea that we can have a one-size-fits-all won't work. Well, I, I won't let you get away with that because I keep hearing that from you guys. It's not a one-size-fits-all. I keep explaining that 50-50 is the bot. That is, we desire that to be the end result, that the children are raised, brought up, by both parents equally contributing your to the well-being of, doing of this it child. Your way won't achieve your objective. You'll end up with just more litigation and just more conflict within the courts. Well, the minister is right that in most couples' lives, the woman will still do the bulk of the domestic work. She is wrong in assuming that this must continue upon separation. Like the courts, the minister is defending the past. She, like they, seem to be unable to understand the present or imagine the future. The point is that if men were allowed to be with their children, they too would be caring for them. This will happen in our time, but not when a government pursues outdated modes of social policy. But what this is, is a tinkering with a wholly prejudiced, discriminatory, biased, inadequate and unjust system. And an unthinking tinkering with family law becomes unjustified tampering with people's lives. So stop tinkering, stop messing, tear down this law and start again. Because what fathers and mothers and grandparents and more specifically children need is the presumption that when you split up, when you separate, that the kids need to know that they will be with their mum and their dad half the time, where that's possible. If it's not possible, let's work something else out. Why not? The tens of thousands of men, women, fathers, mothers, grandparents, sisters, brothers, new wives, who've written to me have been betrayed by this disgusting law. And until this disgrace has been torn up and rewritten, the letters and the pain will not stop. My response is not to read the letters anymore, you know. Once you identify with the first dozen, and then you realise the next dozen are worse, and then it goes on being worse and worse. I edit the magazines so I hear their stories and write them up in as dispassionate a manner as I can. But when it comes to my own sort of um, sadness, it's actually... I mean, 99% of the time you, you, you kind of wouldn't know, I think. And then just suddenly, from nowhere, you know, perhaps it's the intensity of this discussion we've been having, you know, suddenly hits you. Well, you have to suppress it, don't you? I mean, the, the only way you can survive, because mm. otherwise you'd be a basket case. Uh, you yeah. Know, uh, you, you have to suppress Some it somewhere. Sort of denial, yeah. And that's why I say cruel and inhuman. Yeah. They, they don't know what they're doing when these judges are making the decisions that they're making. They just don't know what they're doing to people. In the end, I did end up with um, the children 50% of the time. It worked okay. Um, it probably would have gone on to be fine, uh, except, of course, in our particular case, there were the finally the tragic circumstances of Paula's death. But I'm fine now. The kids are fine. But I and they will never forgive what this state, through this law, did to us to ruin our family even further than our own self-inflicted damage. What has to happen is that men must be allowed their dignity. They must be allowed to be with their children. So let's repeat what the feminists did in the 60s. They made the personal political and there is nothing more personal than being with your children. The law is profoundly flawed. So translate your grief into action. Let your loss move you. Make your dismay and hurt felt. Literally demonstrate your love for your children so that even if they cannot see you, they can see you love them. What choice do they leave you? Speak your unsayable pain and articulate the real love 
that dare not speak its name, that of a father for his children, and no law should stand that serves to stifle this. Since this programme was made, one of the interviewees, Alan Levy QC, has sadly died. For more information about the UK's child residence laws and advice on shared parenting, visit channel4.com slash family. Next tonight, we hear from couples, including the ones who provoked a media storm, to see if wife swap changed their marriage. <laughs>